Hey, hello, mate. Good afternoon. Look who we've got. The head gardener. I'm back. You go, you're back. It's a New Year treat, oh, Sean. Honest, Don't expect me to be here every day. We are honoured. But seriously. I'm delighted to be here. I've got some great stuff to talk about. We really about. have. So for those of you that don't know, this is the head gardener at U Garden. We don't see him very often, do we? Well, I mean, you are obviously I'm working, always here, doing things. just not here. Just I'm not here. Just over there. So I'm already digging normally. a hole, you see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what you're doing at the moment, I'm by not. the sounds of it. <laughs> So yeah. working with the boss is not easy. Is <laughs> um, but seriously, Peter, it, you've got such an amazing experience. You've taught me so much over the last 20 years, actually. It's been hard work, that. But, um, <laughs> but I have, yeah. But I mean, I've literally been in, in the gardening world for my whole life. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So, you know, went to college, you know, formally taught horticulture it's I've, I've lived and worked on my family nursery i've grown things for a living and now i just get to do this which is amazing yeah. and today's show it's all about bare roots isn't it if this is a, this is about really giving you the inside edge this is what the professionals do so you're getting grower quality bare root fruit trees that's certainly one of the things we're going to be talking about and these will give you crops that will go on for up to 50 years so when wow. you plant a fruit tree um, well, you know, your plant is an investment. You're talking about decades and decades. And all three of the varieties in our mini orchard collection will live for more than 50 years, as long as you look after them. There's a basic bit of maintenance, but they will be productive, typically highly productive from the third year. But you may get a few fruits the first year you plant them. That's luck, but it may happen. But you will get massive crops every year from the third year Come onwards. On. Well, we're going to give you a little preview of all of the great fruit trees that are coming up. And if you are new to the show, uh, you won't see him again for quite a few months. But no, I'm, I'm back. I'm going to be back. Don't you worry. A couple of weeks. A couple yeah, of weeks. Are, actually. Uh, but we have got a special offer code that you should always use on the shows. It's YGTV0324. And that will give you a fantastic free gift today. 100 of the short, nice side. Really good selection. These are the small ones, about 25 centimetres. They're, they're often regarded as uh, rockery narcissus or ah, rockery daffodils yeah. because, well, you can see that big hunking piece of rock in the back there, Sean. So these are the compact ones. So they're lovely and compact. But they also do something special. It's called naturalization. So when you plant these, they will naturally just be happy. You don't have to lift them or do anything to them. Plant them one year and they'll just love being there. So wow. if you've got some trees, some shady tree, you know, trees where the, we get a bit of shade cover, get these planted there. So make a small hole, maybe get a crowbar, something like that. Make a hole about two or three inches deep. Drop one bulb in, ideally the right way around, because otherwise they get very confused. So the point side up on daffodils very easy mm. roots down you normally can tell drop them the right drop them the right way up and then just put a bit of compost or soil back on top and then you've got little beautiful dwarf narcissus that will pop up through your lawn right quick question is it too late to plant them not at all and i've got a i've got a guilty secret here okay guilty secret go on Guess what I haven't planted yet? I haven't planted my alliums. I've got some massive alliums I haven't planted yet. I was going to do it over Christmas, didn't get round to it. Then it's gone slightly colder. I'm going to do it this coming weekend because we've got 11 degrees forecast for this weekend. Ooh, lovely. So I'm going to do it then. But I've got tulips and I've got alliums and I've got some narcissus that I haven't planted yet. When you plant them a bit later, nature's wonderful. They'll just catch up. In the first year, they, if you really go super late with planting them, they'll still flower. They'll just be a bit later and they'll be a bit shorter normally. Yeah, that's The right. second year, they just go that's back normal. to normal. Absolutely. So take advantage. They are worth £20. We did sell them for £20. £19.99. Free with every order yep. today. Uh, 630029. Uh, and Anne's oh, just Anne. messaged said, good to see the boss doing some actual work. <sighs> Harsh, I, I, I did some work in about September. No, I do. I do go to work every day. He I does. Do. Not. Actually, I do. I, do, he's, he's really hard working, his pizza. I, I went to work at five o'clock last Saturday. In the morning, that is, not in the afternoon. <laughs> there we are. What so, time did you finish? Oh, uh, yeah, I can't talk about yeah. that too much. Um, but no, it's, do you know what? And, and Peter is a wealth of information, so we're going to learn loads today. Well, ask loads of questions. Any yeah. questions, let us have them. Right, should you quickly Only about here? gardening, though. Yeah, let's do yeah, that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. Oh, I'm rusty, you have to tell me. Where are we down here? Yeah, down here. So we are going to start off with a few little extras. And this is our... Well, you're on that camera, by the way. It's yeah. Absolutely nice. yeah. You look good on there. Uh, right, we've got our uh, fish blood and bone. Big, big one and a half kilo pot. Um, what kind of things would you use this for, Peter? So blood, fish and bone is natural. It's organic. It's a, it's a fabulous general fertiliser. So anything you plant that's a rose... 
a tree, a shrub, a perennial, anything that's going to be in the soil that's going to be there for years, when you plant it, take out the planting hole and then literally, and the, these tubs are great by the way, so literally you've got a little bit there, you just click that down, then it comes off. And this is what blood, fish and bone um, looks like. God. So it's just, a, it's just a dry powder, okay? And what I do is literally, I do it, just get a little handful, literally a sprinkle like that, about that much. So I'd say, you know, a tablespoonful, let's say. Put that in the bottom of a planting hole. Literally loosen up the soil in the bottom of the planting hole and then plant your tree. We're going to show you how to plant. Yeah. We're going to show you how to plant a fruit tree in a pot in a short while in the studio because we haven't got any soil in here. We've only got a hard floor, so we're going to do it in a pot. But I'll still put some of that in. So even if you're planting in containers, use blood, fish, and bone. And I'll tell you what, Peter, for four ninety nine to get one and a half kilos, yeah. and to get it in the really good tub, because I've bought I bought it in boxes before, and they're not they're just not as easy. What I, yeah, exactly right? The boxes really annoy me. The, uh, in fact, I was talking to the guys uh, a couple of weeks ago. I, I, this, this is honestly true. I said, do not sell any fertilisers that are in a cardboard box because um, when you're out in the garden and it's damp and it, you know, so sometimes right, yeah. e even if it doesn't rain, and it, but it's just damp and you pop it on the floor, suddenly the cardboard's soggy and you've got a load of fertiliser wasted on the, so on the ground. Right. With these, basically, you've got the sealable lid, you pop the lid back on. So if suddenly the rain comes across and actually um, my old dog used to love blood, fish and bone. She'd always have her nose in there and licking it. And I'm, I'm not sure it's, I'm not recommending mm. it for that, by the way. Um, didn't, didn't, didn't make her branches grow very well at all. But, but, but dogs do love it. Um, so when you've got the lid on, you can keep it safe, keep it dry, keep it away from pets and children, although it is organic and it is safe, but get it in your planting yeah. hole for every perennial you plant, even in, even in pots. Yeah, and that is only 499 today, 10046. Now we've also got the mycorrhizal. Do you know, Peter, I've only started using this the, probably the last couple of years, but it's brilliant, isn't it? Um, you know, over the years, this has gone from being a mysterious, misunderstood thing that people were almost in denial about. And actually what's happened, and things like forest bathing have, have become a thing. Who goes forest bathing? Who walks in the forest and you breathe in that mm. lovely air and it just... It energizes and refreshes and relaxes you, and it's and it's about the symbiotic effect, which is the combination of the environment and the atmosphere and all of these things working together to create that feeling. What root grow does, and it's called mycorrhizal fungi. I'm just going to leave. There we are. That's the word. Mycorrhizal fungi, is it creates a symbiotic relationship between everything that's in the soil. And all of the plants that are in that particular area. So whenever you plant anything, basically by putting mycorrhizal fungi into the planting hole, you accelerate that. And I'll tell you the living example of how you can witness this thing at work. So when you go, if you, if you project yourself forward to, say, early summer, and you go into an area where all of the leaves have fallen last autumn, and then you just have a little root around in the uh, ground level where you've got leaves happening and you pull back a clump of, of, of that sort of semi decomposed leaf litter. What you'll see are that they're, they're, they're almost like white fibers. White, yeah, yeah. And you think, my God, what are they? Yeah. That's mycorrhizal fungi. And what happens is different species of trees have different friendly fungi, different friendly mycorrhizal fungi. And you have got here what is, it's a bit like a broad spectrum antibiotic. So when you go to the GP and you need antibiotics, but they're not quite sure what kind of infection, they give you what's called a broad spectrum antibiotic. This is a broad spectrum mycorrhizal fungi. So this will cover a whole host of different trees, shrubs, plants generally, and it will invigorate them. It will help them get the most nutrients, have the best resistance to disease in dry periods because their root system is locked into all of the friendly relationships it will be they'll be more more, more durable during those difficult God. times do you know i've forgotten how good he was seriously yeah yeah well he's, he i love a stuff, bit of mycorrhizal fungi yeah. me and so i've only been using it probably the last yeah. two years peter but mm. it's i've had brilliant results well i tell you i tell you i tell you why you can trust that this stuff works okay guess who really does or, or, or which organizations now really use this and why do they use it well i've seen it on the packet it's okay. the rhs well the rhs yeah. support it so the rhs is world renowned the Royal Horticultural Society. You can see it down yeah, there. Yeah, so they support it. Yeah, they support Now, when you actually see mass plantings in big developments or 
big road developments and they and they plant a lot of new trees and so on at the sides of the roads they now put this in the planting holes wow. but they plant far fewer trees because the survival rate when you plant anything basically that's a hardy tree shrub plant and they've got this the survival rate is massively higher so they plant they spend far less money on the trees they plant and the survival rate is much higher so better wow. for everybody and it's better for the plants so i would say this is definitely you don't a, a little goes a very long way so this pack will go you know dozens of tree shrubs plants but it will invigorate them it will give them the best chance of establishment and it really is a must and works brilliantly alongside the blood fish and, and, and don't forget if you are putting together a, a big order today if you spend over 40 pounds you will get free delivery as well so it's really worth yep. getting this little extras getting your order to over 40 pounds and you get free delivery right we'll quickly show some of the fruit cheese coming up so we've got cherry little stella coming up yep well cherry stella one of Ooh, the yeah. best summer fruiting sweet fruited cherries you can buy but this is a super compact version and these are laden with flowering bud so i can tell you yeah. that you see these big swollen buds there's one that one there that one in particular that's going to flower for you that's going to give you fruit this year so these are amazing but if you haven't got room for a big full-size cherry tree this is great this is going to grow to about a meter and a half really super compact great for your patio turns up in a five liter pot so perfect yeah and postage is included on that one now we've also got this is really interesting We've got an apple tree that actually has three varieties on exactly. one tree. Three. Well, Look at this. There we are. So this has been grafted. So this is the rootstock down here, but you've got Braeburn, Bramley, and John of Gold. So three different varieties on the same family fruit tree. So if you think you'd like to grow a range of fruits yeah. that are apples, but you don't have much room, perhaps you're limited, perhaps you've only got room for one tree, grow this one because you've got three varieties on a single tree. I tell you, that's an amazing price there as well. That is actually half price at yep. 99 that, I have to say, uh, anybody watching, if you are watching, go and check on the web how much a family fruit tree with three varieties of apple would cost you and compare it to that. Yeah. Gen, gen, we, we I'm, that, we, we I'm, I'm, I'm slightly taken aback. I know, I know the grower we work really closely with managed mm. to give us a super deal on a small com consignment of this particular tree. I think it, he had a cancelled order, so we bought them all wow. and we potted them. So these have been grown in our compost on the nursery from a bare root. So we'll show you the compost later, but they are that is incredible yeah. value. I must admit, even as a bare root, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? That would be incredible. But yeah, it's yeah. potted and grown yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah, amazing. I think I'm going to order that one. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Uh, right, and quickly, we're also coming up. We have got, now this is really exciting, Patio apricots. So, so again, apricots in the UK. Think about little Stella. So if, you, if you've got a smaller garden, maybe a courtyard garden, maybe a balcony, you can now grow apricots. You can grow cherries, you know, super compact trees, very productive, really attractive, fantastic. God. And then also we have got a fantastic pear tree as well. They are amazing. And, and if you look at these, they are super chunky. Again, when we look at the... The, the size of these particular, the, the stems, the thickness of these stems. Again, this is a really good tree, really good sample of tree grown by one of Europe's best and, fruit tree producers. And that must be at least a few years old. That is it? at least four years is old, it? Yeah. probably five. I, and it's and, a nation's favourite pear as well, confidence. Likely to fruit this year as well. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of that, and that's only 24 months and postage included, and that is my favourite pear. It is the confidence, probably your favourite as well. But we are going to start today's show with the opportunity for you to have a mini orchard in your garden. And we were saying, Peter, a lot of new gardens are a lot smaller than they used to be. They are. You know, in our day, I mean, now, you know, we're obviously in our late 30s now. And um, <laughs> Is that waste? Oh, no, yes. Uh, you're, 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 you're really, you really are lying, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But we're I wish actually, I was, we're, though. We're, oh. we're actually we're, we're pretty much the same. We are the same age, aren't we? Um, but we, I remember growing up, and people had decent-sized gardens, and now the modern estates' gardens are a lot smaller. But that doesn't mean that you can't have your own orchard. Exactly. And fruit trees are, I mean... There's been so much publicity over the last two or three years. God bless her. Before Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II passed away, she was leading a massive initiative to plant trees. Yes, yeah, she what was. What an amazing, what an amazing thing to do. And actually, when you look at um, 
the positive impact of planting trees in terms of lowering temperatures in their general environment? You know, when you see pictures of the um, African savanna, where do all of the animals go during the daytime? They find the nearest tree and yeah. sit in the shade. Plant a tree and improve the environment is the big message here. But these are fabulous because not only are you planting three trees in this case, but they're productive trees. So if you're going to plant a tree, is a great thing to do. Great for the environment, great for the world. Plant a fruit tree, great for your pocket, great for your health, because you're now going to save money. These will produce tens and tens of pounds of fruit in weight every year from the third year onwards. Wow. A mature apple Brayburn could produce between 40 and 50 pounds of fruit in weight per season once it's fully mature. A Victoria plum... Um, that picture of the Victoria Plum you can see there. Yeah. I was actually, I, I don't think I took the picture, but I was there the day the pictures uh, and the videos were taken. Um, that was just in Cambridge, just north of Cambridge, God. in a little village called Cottenham. And they were astonishing. But you can see, you see the branches that are almost like cascading down there. That's the weight of the fruits doing that to them. Um, and, and you, again, can pick. 30, 40, or even 50 pounds of fruit from a mature Victoria plum. And then conference pear, which is the third of these, you've got Brayburn apple, you've got conference pear, then you've got um, the, the, the beautiful, beautiful plum. But you've got all three of those included. But the pear is divine. I've, that's actually, that was um, a friend's hand, but in my garden. So those, that is a tree in my garden. God. So productive. The only problem we had, actually, we did have one problem with that tree. My border collie, who's no longer with us, sadly, used to scrump. She loved the pear. <laughs> Honestly, she was a nightmare. She'd go off for hours and we'd say, Where, where's, where's Lottie? Mm. Oh, yeah, she's off eating the pears. Yep. Bless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But massively productive and they'll live for 40, 50, even 60 years. In fact, Isaac Newton proved it because the Bramley apple that's in his, uh, what was his family home at Woolsthorpe, just north of um, uh, Stamford, the original tree is still there and he was around a few years ago. He's even older than us. He's dead now. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, these are working out eight, just under £8 pounds each. Amazing value. Which is absolutely incredible. Um, the RRP is nearly £60, pounds, by the way. Postage is £6.99, but don't forget... If you get your order to over forty pounds, you will get free delivery as well. And it's really worthwhile. You're watching today, getting our heavy duty pots on the show, getting the uh, professional compost. Then you get everything that you need. So, Peter, there, there will be some of our, our lovely viewers today that have never planted a, a bare root tree. Is it easy? Well, simple as. Let, let me explain it simply. If if a farmer can plant fields of something. You should have no trouble at home. OK, so so fruit farmers will plant an orchard of 5, 10, 15, 20,000 trees at a time on a field scale. Um, now, they know what they're doing, clearly. But if you can grow something on a field scale, you can definitely grow it in your home. This is amazing. So you've got the root stock here. So that this, this is the root and it's been lifted. It's been it's been lifted from the field at the point of absolute dormancy. And then they've gone into the cold store. They've been under the studio lights for an hour or so. So they look a bit dry. But we're going to talk about that in a minute. This is the root stock. So this this gives the characteristic of this case. This is Apple Brayburn. I can tell just by looking at the bark there. These little these little coloured spots on there. Tell me this is Apple Brayburn. If I look at the label in a minute and I'm not right, I'm not going to tell you, by the way. Um, but you've got the root stock. I'm checking that. You've then got the grafting point which is just here now the crucial thing when you plant a fruit tree or a rose is the grafting point must always be above soil level because you want the rootstock to be in the soil but you want the joint where the variety meets the rootstock to be above the soil level and then what you've got is these lovely feathers so these lovely side branches and it's these side branches that give you the, the crop and the productivity over time so this is a commercial grade fruit tree that's on a dwarfing rootstock so you could grow this in a, in a smaller garden. This is going to get to a couple of metres tall. You can, you can prune it really easily. And the rule of thumb with pruning fruit trees is you summer prune for fruit. Who would have thought you summer prune fruit trees? The professionals do. Summer prune for fruit, winter prune for growth. So if you want your tree to stop growing vigorously, and it's a fruit tree, prune it in the summer. If you want it to grow and grow in size and stature, winter pruning is the answer so it couldn't be easier but that's the rule of thumb and, and this is Brayburn apple so this will live this will live for the next 50 or so years 
plant it in a sunny position. Plant it somewhere where there's plenty of airflow. The rule of thumb I always say is if you stand like this, next, go, go over there. Go oh, on, like put this, your arm yeah, out yeah, like yeah. that. Okay, so I'm one tree, You're the, that's the closest the next tree needs to be. So I always think about two meters okay. in a garden setting, and that allows plenty of light, plenty of airflow, plenty of sunshine. Whether, and you could plant these in a row, in a sunny position, all three of them together, about six foot or two meters apart. So, um, I enjoyed being a tree. It reminded me of my drama school days, actually. <laughs> um, you did well, actually. You did really well, didn't you? We should have given a little round of applause. I'll do that next time. Yeah. We'll do it again in a minute. But it is as simple as that. Now, a lot of people decide to actually plant these in pots, don't they? Exactly. exactly. I'm going to do a little demonstration now. You get all three, don't forget, 23.97. Um, but we have got the heavy duty pots coming up, and these, they're ideal for these trees, aren't they? The heavy now? duty pots are amazing. So, this is a grower quality product. So you can see they're made from really, really tough plastic. So these are made to last for decades. And what, what these are used for in practical terms in the industry is if you've ever seen the big nurseries where they've got trees that are quite substantial, that have been planted for probably four, three, four, five years maybe even, and, and that these come in even bigger sizes commercially, they'll use this grade of pot because this is never going to change characteristics in the, in the cold temperature or the, you know, whatever the weather, cold temperature, sunshine, these will never vary. They're always going to be completely sunshine proof, UV stabilised. They've got side drainage. So the little holes in the side there, Sean, mean that even if they're on a very flat surface and the bottom drainage can't work, they'll still drain. So you'll never waterlog anything in these. And the reason that's essential from a commercial point of view is they're going to plant a tree in one of those. Could be a fruit tree, just like we've got here. Pop it in there, and it's going to stay in there for two or three years. Then they're going to charge you a fortune mm -hmm. when that's grown on. In the meantime, there's going to be a little trickle irrigation um, noodle in there. They're called noodles. They're little sort of pipes. Mm -hmm. They go in there, and then that trickle feeds water. So, And that happens about half a litre every sort of 15 to 20 minutes when it's really warm to keep it hydrated. Now, if the water doesn't actually come out, then the thing will eventually waterlog. So it needs to be drained, but the compost and the growing media needs to be nice and moist. So they're perfect for that. So these and, are going to last years. And how long would the tree be happy in there for? Oh, so? I think at least three or four years. Really? Yeah, at least. But you have to water it. You have to give it some blood, fish and bone. You have to keep it because yeah. the nutrients that are within the compost the year you plant it, obviously that's finite. So you've got to replenish those nutrients to get to get this absolutely um, working well. Um, and I have to say, out of all the products that I've bought from New Garden over about 20 years, these are the I, I use these more than anything else, Peter. Yeah, and I've yeah. had so, I've had some of mine. I bet it's about twelve years, you know. Yeah, they, I've never ever broken a handle. They've never cracked. Yeah, exactly, and 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 they are a commercial product. You know, you don't you, you probably would never see these in a garden centre. I don't think you'll ever see these in a DIY shed. Uh, the thing I forgot, by the way, is the handle. So if you grab that handle, so if you've got something that's heavy, you can share the load. If you've got something that's spiky, so if you I, I've seen people grow on things like your Phoenix palms and so on. Yeah, yeah, and they pop them into those sort of square planters you know the Versailles planters they'll pop them in there in the summer to beautify the patio but they've got them in these and then in the winter they tuck Ooh. them away and then put something else in there yeah, great you idea. can do it easily because you can pick them up with the handles I actually I've got two living Christmas trees that I've got in mind have you yeah from, from you idea. Peter yeah. um, but the great thing I don't want them on show all the time so I again at Christmas time I move them mm. out mm. I'd, I'd sort of like fancied the pots up but now I've just put them slightly out of the way yeah Peter I know when you're on the shows you always tend to get really good prices so um, eleven ninety nine. I had nothing to do is with that. that. For, hang I on, had nothing. It is a great price, though, isn't that's it? That's for three. You imagine three of these. He all, a, on, honestly, he always does this. I didn't do it though. That's well, the, that's the point. I promise you, uh, I had no say in uh, any of this. I didn't even know what I was doing when I woke up this morning. Uh, well, Some I, days I don't even get matching socks. <laughs> you know, that's all I'm saying. I don't want to. I don't want to besmirch myself, but it is true. Well, that all I'll say is that is an amazing price. It's four pounds each for those. It's eleven ninety nine. You do get three, which would be ideal for the three fruit trees. So exactly. If you want to go for, I can always say they are, for me, they're the, the most used products I've ever bought from New Garden. 130002 and And they're not just great for planting your trees. I've grown tomatoes and then potatoes are fantastic. But also when you're just out in the garden, picking up leaves, when you're weeding, when you're lugging things around, if you're bringing in logs from your log store, they're just a brilliant all-rounder for moving things around but also ideal for growing and as Peter said we've had some we've had some really wet months with climate change sometimes you have so much rain 
And the great thing about those heavy juice pots, they're never going to allow something to be waterlogged in that. And don't forget, if you want the mini orchard, these are working out about eight pounds each day. It's the nation's favourites, the Apple Brayburn, the Pear Conference, and the Plum Victoria. All three of those, and they're going to give you pounds and pounds of fruit for absolute decades so over the years you could save an absolute fortune and you don't even need a big garden member because of the way that these have been grafted and grown they're 300 004 but we thought we thought we'd get beats to do a bit of work always i love a bit of work though you do it especially when it involves gardening so i've got one of our 30 liter pots and i've put some compost in any old compost Peter? no this no. is our premium professional compost so the one that the family fruit tree is growing in is the same compost we use it all over the nursery so what i've done is i've put probably i'm going to say about three or four inches of yeah. compost in there then i'm going to go in with now there are nutrients there is slow release nutrients in our fertilizer in our compost, compost rather yeah. um but i'm actually going to because i'm i'm going to plant a fruit tree in here literally i've got a bit of blood fish and bone in there and that's slow release so the blood fish and bone is great because not only is it organic and it's environmentally friendly that will gradually deploy over six months so you really have made a difference the other thing and, and some people say really what would you why would you do that with something growing in a pot i've got my root growth so my mycorrhizal fungi here so you you always use both absolutely okay. yeah 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 all i'm going to do i'm going to go in with one scoop of this okay so it literally is that's it and that's all you need as soon as that as soon as we water this that mycorrhizal fungi will spring into life and away we go now we did talk about um soaking a tree yep okay so um, and we've had this bring, soak in for several hours yep absolutely I'm do you say like two hours is a minimum peter or? doesn't matter the longer the better i yeah. think i normally do it overnight if I'm exactly honest. so so there's no reason not to do it for 24 or even 48 hours because all you're doing is you're just softening there's two things really you're softening the roots and what you're also doing is making sure the tree's got a real good opportunity to fully hydrate so this tree is a lovely tree this is again this happens to be brayburn apple and i've guessed well because the roots are more or less perfectly perfectly right there so if you can hold that straight for me now this is this is one of the things which i think is really important so when when i pot something like this into a larger pot you always want it to be nice and central and then it really is as simple as going in with the compost and we're topping it up the other thing is never ever fill up the pot to the brim with the compost because when you, I'm going to firm this down, then I will just need to put a little bit more in. In the, I wouldn't, with a lot of bedding plants and things, I wouldn't necessarily over firm, okay? But with a tree, it needs to be stable. So, because I guess just, you don't want it to blow around the correct, wind or anything like correct. that. Correct. And I trust this compost. We use this for so many things. I trust it in the sense that I know this compost will not become cloggy and cause a problem with drainage because its constituents of blend of peat plus wood fiber plus nutrients and everything else are perfect so and it really sean is that okay. now i've left at least an inch from the top on the compost here because when i now water it i'm not going to do it inside the studio but when that's watered you can literally fill it to the brim it will bubble 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 when the bubbles stop you know it's had a full and then just leave it and leave it probably for three or four days particularly at this time of year and then literally you can check how moist it is just dab your finger in and if the, it's a bit you know when you cook a cake you stick a skewer in and if the if the mix sticks to your finger yeah. you know it's plenty uh, it, it needs a bit longer in the oven with the compost if if when you do that and you pull your finger out and it's covered in peat or compost you can you can basically almost guarantee it needs it needs no water just leave it to its own devices and away you go and, and there that we is are. the trip that is now, it now i only, i i live near a, a really nice garden centre and they sell potted trees like this in very similar pots yep. and you can honestly pay when the trees are in blossom or you know fruiting 60 pounds plus per tree yep. at least and I would just do it I was doing the rough maths here they, the trees eight pounds the pots work out four pounds each so that's 12 yep. you've used probably well probably a third it's a 30 compost. litre pot yeah the so i've used yeah, about 30 litres of compost so say yeah. eight pounds worth of compost so when you actually work out the value that's probably cost about 20 pounds maximum peter yep. you would pay i think triple that if you bought it potted in the garden center i think so I and think that's so. going to give you 
up to around, we were saying decades, maybe 50 years of fruit. Yep. And uh, that's the value, isn't it? But also, look, you know, these are grower quality trees. They're yeah. on the dwarfing rootstock. Remember what I said before. So the rootstock is here. This is the, this is the union. So that's nicely above the level. And the great thing is that a lot of people say, oh, I'd like to grow, I'd like to get my fruit trees started, but I'm going to move next year. A lot of people have thought about moving, but with the, the econ economic things that have been going on, maybe not moved. Yeah. The great thing about this is, Get your trees started. Don't miss out the year. Get them started now. And when you go, just take them with you. Yeah, take course. them with you. OK, you've got a slightly larger planting hole to dig in your new garden, but that's fine. You're, you've got a massively more valuable, much more expensive tree that is going to give you instant impact and massive amounts of fruit. God. And I, I, I think over the past several years... I've really got a lot more into grow your own because I, I think we're a lot, a lot more aware of the environment. Yep. And to me, what is the point of shipping apples and pears and plums across the country, even across the world, yep. where you can actually grow them in your own backyard? And you don't need a massive amount of space for these at all. No. Even if you've got like a courtyard, a small little garden, it doesn't matter, does it, Peter? You could live, basically... In a block of flats. Yeah, you could, couldn't you? You could have an external uh, balcony area and you can still grow your own apples, pears and plums because the space you need is this. Yeah. And actually, at this time of year, you can put them right together because they're dormant at this time of year. There are no leaves. It's only really from about March onwards when they're coming into leaf and they're blossoming, you just need to give them a little bit more um, you know, space to, to get around them and, and, and allow mm. the pollinators in. But they are all self-fertile. So just all three that, of these yeah. varieties will... Brilliant. So Brayburn will pollinate itself. Victoria will pollinate itself. Conference will pollinate itself. So, so you don't need to worry about, do I need a second apple? No, you don't. Do you need a second pet? No, you don't. Do you need a second plum? No, you don't. It's all fine. So they're compact. They're professional quality. They're grower quality. They're self-fertile. Great for pots, great for the garden. And what's so. the maximum kind of height that he's going to grow, Peter? Well, interestingly, when you, if you um, grow them in pots, that slightly topiarizes them, slightly dwarfs them, if you like, so it, it will stop the growth. But left un, unchecked, they would eventually get to two metres, maybe three metres eventually. But That's not huge, though, Not it? really. No. But the way to stop that is just take out the leader. So this is the leader. This is known as the leader, this central stem, because what plants, plants know up from down, they know what gravity is. Strange to think that, but they really do. So they have this thing called apical dominance. And apical dominance says there will always be one branch in any tree that is the leader it's the it's it, it's 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 pointing to the sun pointing to the sky and opposing gravity if you just get a pair of secateurs and at 45 degrees just take out the central leader and then one of these other branches will eventually take over and in two years do it again and what what happens when you take the leader out is you get all of this lovely yeah. feathering all of these lovely yeah. side branches and it's the side branches that give you the biggest crops of fruit God. so you can really keep an eye on the height of this but just get so much more fruit as well. Now, when our head gardener is here, Ooh. you might you might as well take advantage of his knowledge. So any questions... Only about gardening, though. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can't give advice on anything else. Well, <laughs> well I could, but I'm not going to. Well, um, Anne's just um, asked about pruning. So do you prune before or after? You know what? It doesn't matter. Because, and in fact, what, what a lot of professional um, gardeners will do, or, or nurserymen will do, is when the tree is in fruit, they'll actually, sometimes they'll just break a stem. They'll, you'll, you'll see them doing this sometimes. They'll literally break it. I'm not going to do it now because it's the wrong time of year, but they'll literally get a branch like that and just snap it, but not snap it off, just break it. And then that... that is then literally in a slightly downward trajectory and that will slow the sap flow down which will increase the probability of fruit bud set for the following year wow. so you'll you'll generally start with fruit fruiting bud closest to the main stem that's because it's the oldest branch you know the oldest branch is this one in the middle and then the closer you get to the main trunk the older and more woodified the growth is in, on any fruit tree and therefore the higher the probability that you've got fruiting bud there which is why often you see for example on cherry trees chunky central stems and then the branches come off and all of the flowers early years are very close to the main stem and that happens a lot and, and actually you can trick it by doing that summer pruning so you have to do summer pruning pretty much while you've got fruit on the tree yeah. great question though Anne mm. and we have got a question about the cherry tree um, so who's this from? Elaine, oh, Elaine's Elaine. one of my regulars. So, Elaine watches all the time, and she, she, yeah. 
Do you know some of the things we say about you, Peter? All good oh. things. All good. Now, all good things. Hopefully, they've not been saying bad stuff. I no. do watch sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, so, cherry but, trees. Yes. When will they fruit for the first yes. time? So, so she bought it last year. Okay. So there's there's two or three interesting things. The first thing is, you can sometimes, if you plant super early, so Jan Feb, because cherries generally flower early in the season. They're one of the first things to flower of the fruit of the fruit trees that you might have in your garden. Um, they flower early and they fruit earlier. So cherries and other stone fruit like plums are generally sort of July into early August, whereas your apples and your pears are generally August into, uh, sorry, September into October, so they're a bit later. So by starting super early this year, you get the probability of getting some fruit this year. But on a cherry, it's unlikely you would ever get fruit the first year. What you should see now is the oldest stems, like I was referring a moment ago. So the main stem and the, the, the buds closest to the main stem should now already be starting to exhibit signs of being a bit larger and a bit more swollen than the ones towards the end. So if you look at these buds here, they're quite small. If you, the further down you come, the bigger they get. And that's just, that's just because of their age. But the probability on your cherry tree, these ones will fruit this year. The ones that are closest to the main stem is higher. Um, so a few things. First thing is when they're in blossom, Obviously, if there's a harsh frost, fleece them just just if there is a harsh frost, because if they get frosted, the flowers won't get pollinated. If you can get like a little paintbrush and move the pollen from flower to flower to flower, virtually every cherry, not every cherry, but virtually every cherry is self fertile. Do that. The pollinators will go at it as well. But if you do get a harsh frost warned, bit of fleece or pop it inside if it's yeah. in a pot. Then July, typically, that's when you'll get your first fruits. So hopefully, fingers crossed this year, you should see some fruits. But you'll know because if you get flowers, that's the beginning of the cycle. Without any flowers, you'll never get fruits. If you see the flowers and they get pollinated, that's when nature will come to, come to do its work for you. So fingers crossed, Elaine. Yeah. Um, now, we did mention that we've planted this in our premium professional compost. Peter, I was thinking, we, we have sold this compost for so yeah. many years now. But it must be millions and millions of litres oh, that have been ordered. We worked out how many Olympic swimming pools you could fill with the compost we have over the years sold at one point. And I can't remember, but it's ever it such was, a lot. It was a huge amount. <laughs> it's technically um, ever such a lot. And, and I know most of, of our regulars that you love this compost. You won't buy anything else. But we always get new viewers. Mm. So can we go right back to basics, yeah. the history of it, and what's actually in it, Peter, and what makes it so special? Okay. So we describe this as premium professional compost. And the reason for that is it is the compost that is known, this formula, we have perfected over decades. So I've been using it for decades. We have perfected it over decades. You've got a blend of the best peats, plus wood fibre that you can imagine. Now, by volume, approximately 50% of this compost is wood fibre, and the balance is made up of a blend of peats, and there are three different peats. So you've got things like sphagnum moss peat, which is renewable. You've got sedge peat, and, and then you've got darker sphagnum as well in there. So you've got three different peats. You've also got, you can see actually just there, they're slow release fertilizer. These little green, what look like little eggs. You'll see those dotted among the compost when you're planting it. That's slow release fertilizer. One of the most expensive ingredients in any compost is fertilizer. You can see there is another one just down below. Um, that is amazing because that will deploy nutrients to the roots of whatever you grow in this compost just when they need it over the next six months. You then got what's called a buffer. Now, peat in particular is naturally acidic. So, and plants like to be just on the acidic side of neutral as a generality. There are exceptions. So things like rhododendrons and azaleas, they love to be properly um, acidic in terms of the, the, the ericaceous soil or compost they're growing in. But most things like it just on the slightly acidic edge of, of neutral. So um, that's what this is designed to give you. So it's got a pH buffer to keep it in exactly that zone. Then it's also got wetting agent. So if you've ever, um, and we've all done this, I've done it myself, you, 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 you forget you've got a, something growing in a pot or a, or a hanging basket, you don't water it for a day or two, then the plants are all looking a bit sad for themselves. The compost turn, it shrinks and, and goes back to a, a sort of, you know, a smaller, smaller component, smaller lump. Then when you water it, you're pouring water in the top and it's all ending up over your toes. Yeah. It's coming straight through. This has got a wetting agent, and wetting agent is special because it's, it's a surfactant, okay? So if you think about what that does, it, it, it 
lowers the water tension, the surface tension rather, on water. So it makes the water stickier. Basically, that's what surfactant does. And, and if you ever want to test this, this is a fabulous thing to test on a very quiet day when you've got nothing else to do. Daytime TV's got to be rubbish for you to want to do this. But get a glass, OK, and fill it to the point where you couldn't put any more in. And then just try and put a little tiny, tiny bit more so you get like a bulbous effect on the top of the glass, OK? Then reach under your sink, because this is exactly where we all keep our washing up liquid, and you get your washing up liquid and you put one tiny, tiniest of tiny, tiny, tiny drops right in the middle of it. And what will happen is the water will go and it'll all spill down the side of the glass. And that's when you release the surface tension. That's what surfactant does. And it then makes the water stickier. So ah. the water will stick to, the, to all of the compost, all of the wood fibre, all of the peat. It will then stick to it much more readily and then rehydrate everything. So we've put that in here. So should yours ever get dry, it will re-wet really, really quickly. Oh. But on the other hand, Peter, it won't, if it's a wet month, it won't make it extra waterlogged. No, 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 not at all. Because the wood fibre keeps the sort of perfect air-water porosity ratio, which is what we talk about in the trade, all these complicated terms. But, but, but it's, what plants need is they need, they, need, they need a jungle gym to grow in. So they need a jungle gym for their roots, which is called growing medium. They need some water and they need some air and they need nutrients. And, and when you've got the perfect compost, it blends the air and the water and the constituents of the compost. It all blends together to give the perfect environment. That's what this particular compost does, which is why it's trusted by us. We will be growing approximately 150,000 potted roses on this nursery this year. That's roughly what we grow most years. We'll be growing, I don't know how many hanging baskets, but our pre-planted hanging baskets that will be available later, you will have bought them in the autumn and last spring as well. They grow in this compost. We will grow countless perennials, whether they be in the nine centimetre square pots or the three litre pots or the five litre pots, plus fruit trees. And this is the compost we use for all of those things. So we trust it. The trade trusts it. And actually, based upon the, the well, literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of bags of this particular compost that you've bought over the years, you definitely trust it as well. And, um, you know, and, and, and actually, Pete... Is a, is a thing. We need to think about Pete. Not me. I, I happen to also be Pete, but it's yes, the Pete it's that's in here that, we, that, that we're talking about. Um, we can still use Pete in our gardens right now. And actually, the alternatives, generally speaking, are a bit iffy. So if you want to get the best results, in my view, use this particular compost for as long as you can. It's got 50% other material in it which is the lowest level we could get to and still have a professional quality product for you and for ourselves so we've been as eco-friendly as we can and we jumped onto that particular mm. uh, that approach years and years and years ago so this is the same formulation that we've had for at least the last six or seven years with 50 percent um, other material to bulk out the peat and it worked it still works better so i would say this is in my yeah. opinion it's the only compost i use at home it's the compost we use on the nursery I can't recommend it highly enough. Yeah. And, and over the years, on various websites, uh, including them, we've had thousands and thousands of five-star reviews. Yeah. And honestly, you know, I, I really have a look at the reviews, and they are, they are amazing. Uh, so you actually get two 50-litre bags. You're saving 17 99 to get two of those. Really, I... I'm not being funny, but I hate 100-litre bags because they're so heavy, so difficult. Well, you're not very strong, are you? He's, he's a dear old boy. I mean, he looks as though he's got muscles and everything, but under there, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, like he has. He's got. Uh, but, but, no, but, but, joke, but it just makes it easy, doesn't it? Well, it does. I think I think there's two things, Sean. First of all, joking aside. The 50 litre bag is a manageable size from yeah. a weight point of view. But also, if you open, these are going to keep for a long time. They're made fresh. They're going to, they've got a good shelf life. But if you use one bag today and you don't open the other bag for another few weeks, it's fine. It's all sealed. So you can actually use it as you then want to without knowing you've got an open bag that's drying out. And, and don't forget, if you are one of our discount club members, and I know we've got tens and tens of thousands of club members, you get 10% off your compost and all your plants every single time that you actually order. So actually, Peter, I'm just thinking in terms of club membership, you only have to buy two lots of compost 
in a year yep. to make your club membership on auto renewal yep. work for itself. Absolutely. So it really is. Yep. A, when, when you order your compass, there'll be a little, um, uh, little message saying how much you can save if you're a club member. Do it today and you'll save next to 10% off your first order with your compass and every mm. order that you make. But it is brilliant. I've used it for years. It's the best compass that I've ever, ever found. And do you know what's frustrating, Peter? Occasionally I've run out and I have had to buy something else and it is no... Mm. So I shouldn't say that for the boss. But occasionally it happens. So stock up now. Get ready because obviously... I mean, we use compost all year round, but some, sometimes you're busy than others. But get it today while you've got that big saving. And if you are a new customer, just try it. It is amazing. I it think really from is. hanging baskets to house plants to your yeah. patio pots, anything that grows in a container, in my view, with the exception of ericaceae, so rhododendrons, azaleas, and so on, this is the best compost. But also great for seeds as well. I, I use it for everything. I, there yeah. is, I don't use any other compost. So, I, in fact, I've recently sown some sweet peas. They're in here. Yeah. I need to do my sweet peas. Anything we say from seeds all the way through to trees and everything in between. Now, we've also got, we've still got to come something really, really unusual. We've got a triple apple tree. So three different varieties of apple. Do you want to hand that, Peter? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop him in the orchard over here. Okay. I'm going to pop that just tucked. I'm going to tuck him in the back. And I'm going to bring, oh, blimey, I've dropped a lemon. Could have been worse, couldn't it? I'm going to pop get this. I'm going to pop this next to you, Sean. Okay, I'll give it a bit this, this more. Is, this is like this is like um, we're very old. This is like way. gardening Jenga. I'm going to pop my, my, my apple tree that I've just potted over there. Uh, how are we doing? How are we doing now? How are we doing? Oh, there we are. That's the kiddie. That's oh, the picture go. I was looking for. Seamless, Peter. Seamless. Absolutely it's seamless. Like the like the tried and tested professional I am. You'd never have known, would you? See, I they haven't let me in here for a while, you see, so I'm out of practice. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm normally with Bex. And, Bex is like super organised, have you noticed? She yeah. isn't she? I'm yeah. not. No, I'm not either. No, I'm not. I'm not. We need Bex, when, when you, when you More garden, Bex, Peter, I'm quite messy when I garden, are you? But I clean up really well afterwards. Well, using my blower, my leaf blower, I can create havoc. And with, with five minutes of a leaf blower, you can clear up almost any mess. Compost, yeah, trimmings, so leaves, blow it all back into the borders and it's all hidden under the trees and shrubs. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I do. But uh, anyway. Anyway, we're all sorted now. We are. Uh, for those of you that have just joined us, this is the head gardener at Gardener. It's the one we always talk about, Peter McDermott. And jokes about you've got such amazing knowledge. I've learned things today, Peter. Have you? I really have. Well, I have. I'm pleased. I have learned I things. I mean, the thing is, the lucky thing for me is there is a saying, and it's a bit hackneyed, but they say if you love what you do for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. And I do. It. And yeah. I probably haven't. Because I, when I go home... I love being in the garden. When I'm here, yeah. I love walking around the nursery and doing yeah. stuff like this. So I'm so I'm well, blessed. Well, some of you will know. I, I mean, I have worked w with you, Garden, for for many years, for about twenty years. But and I work permanently, really, with you. You do. Know, Peter, and I you love do. it. I'm very lucky. You're, uh, you're one of the. What, he's a garden gnome now. He's a you garden garden gnome. He's garden even got gnome. the beard. It's all it's all coming together perfectly, just like I planned Where's all that, those where years is ago. Your gnome, actually, would you, is that Wilf. Yeah, Wilf, that's it. That, I don't quite look like Wilf, this, yeah. This is going to be Sean and me in about 20 years. We'll yeah. still be here. Yeah, that's what I bet Wilf like. will still be here, too. Yes. We still have a lot. You can't buy Woodland Wilf anymore. He's the last Actually, one. I do look quite... You're right with the cheeks now. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so when my, be, where you are, when my beard it's, goes grey... It's I'll, the little red nose. It's yeah. a little bit of... Little, yeah. I think that, yeah, Perfect. there's definitely a bit of Wilf in me. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh, going to move on there to a really exciting apple tree. Three varieties on one. Yep. So this is... This, I mean, this is colloquially described as a family apple tree. And it's called a family apple tree because you've got a family of varieties on the same tree. But did they squabble? But no, I don't know. No. I, I've not seen them squabble. No. I mean, they are keeping their distance at the moment because they're sort of, they're, they're, they're radiating away, aren't they, from each other. But this is great for anybody that wants the greatest opportunity to grow a mixed selection of apple varieties where you get different flavours and different uses and it only takes up the planting space of a single tree yeah. so you've got one you've got one rootstock so one set of roots here and then you've got a graft one graft you've got another graft there and then you've got a third graft there now these have been potted up these are growing in our premium professional compost so you can buy these with complete confidence a that we've grown them We've potted them for you. And they're growing in what I think is one of the best composts. Yeah, the the best, three say. varieties you've got here, you've got Braeburn. Okay, so Braeburn is the UK's favourite apple, I think, in terms of eating apple. Yeah, I agree. And, and the reason I judge that, I don't, I don't know that to be absolutely the case, but the reason I think it is, is 
you go into a gar you go go into a supermarket, whether it's one of the high end ones or whether it's one of the more um, affordable ones. Brayburn is on the shelves. It seems to me fifty two weeks of the yeah, year. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's incredible, and the flavour is sublime. You've got this perfect tangy, sweet juiciness that just combines in the mouth perfectly. Mm. And there's a nice crunch as well. There is, it is a crunchy one yeah. as well, absolutely. And the skin finish, that looks like, you know the, the sweets that you can probably remember from a child, the rosy apples? Yeah. That's what it depicts to me. It's, it's like a rosy apple. It's like one of them boiled sweets. Not great for your teeth, probably, but um, not as good for your teeth as a, as a real apple, but, but delicious. Then you've got Bramley. OK, Bramley is the king of cookers. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's apple pies, apple sauce, whether you want to uh, uh, bake an apple, and the way, the way, the best, the best way to, I think, Bramley is, is to, eat an, to eat a Bramley apple is get a fruit, core it, take out the core, and then pop it on a baking tray, probably a bit of parchment under it, and then mix some, ra some fruit. So the sort yeah. of fruit you might have left over, if you made a Christmas cake, like, like we always do this every year, make a Christmas cake, you always end up with loads of fruit. Get the fruit and some demerara sugar, mix it all up together in a bowl, and then push that in the middle yeah. of the Bramley apple where you've taken the core out. Stick it in the oven for about 25, maybe 30 minutes at about 180 degrees, and the flesh, the actual soft mm. apple flesh inside, don't peel it, by the way, leave the skin on, but all of the flesh goes all fluffy and soft and amazing. And all of that demerara sugar and the, and the fruit just seems to colour and flavour it. If you want to put a bit of cinnamon in there as well, it's even better. But it's gorgeous. And that's, you've got that included. So you've got the best cooking apple, the best loved and best known cooking apple. And then finally, you've got John of Gold, which is Europe's favourite eating apple. It's massively popular on the continent, but it grows brilliantly here in the UK. And they make big, lovely eating apples that are real big ones, you know, probably one and a half times the size of a Braeburn. So they're big apples, but they are gorgeous. Now, do these fruit at similar times? Please, they are all there? within a, they are all within about a four to six week period because apples generally will fruit around about early, I always say end of, end of September into early October. And then you pick them over the next month yeah. or so. And, and you've got choices here. So once you're happy that when you pick one fruit of, say, Braeburn and you bite it and it's, and it's just about OK, if you pick all of the fruit and then you pop it somewhere cool, so at fridge temperature, so if you've got a really cool kind of pantry or even if, you, if you're lucky enough to have an external, you know, we've, we've got an external fridge where we put things like apples when we pick them. So it keeps them at fridge temperature and they'll last for months, literally. Yeah. And, of course, you're eating British-grown apples now. It's mid-January. You're eating British grown apples now that were picked last autumn. Now, we do need to point out you are getting a potted fruit tree here. So all three varieties. It's not a bare root because at 19.99, a bare root would be brilliant. But you've already done a lot of the work. You've potted it up. It's phenomenal. Ready to go. I, well, I, I, I would say anybody watching, if you're if you fancy growing something really unusual, something that's really special, something that's not common at all. Something that you don't mm. really see that often. I mean, I don't know how many of the, this particular style of tree there are in the UK, but it, it will be a, a small number. This is this is this is a really lovely thing to have, and and the the nurseryman, the skill of the nurseryman here is phenomenal. So this is three varieties that are grafted, and don't forget, this used to be a very risky business grafting fruit trees back in the Middle Ages. Oh, if you yes. were found to be grafting fruit trees, you could be burnt at the stake for witchcraft. Now, I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna tell anybody about this. You know, we're just gonna keep this secret. But but, You're so but right, though. that is yeah, true. Back yeah, in the Middle Ages, yeah. if you could get two trees to, to grow together it was it was regarded as yeah. witchcraft but you've got you've got the epitome i think of the fruit tree growers expertise here wrapped up in a single tree well it is it's a very special show today with our head gardener we have got today a 20 pound saving on this so even at 39.99 that's how happy amazing but half price today. And I love the idea that you can go three varieties, including Braeburn, your nation's favourite eating apple, Bramley, your nation's favourite cooking apple, and this gorgeous uh, John of Gold, which is Europe's favourite apple. All three on one fruit tree that you could grow in a relatively small space as well, Peter, of course, again. Three varieties growing on a single root system. So, yeah. you know, you, you, you've kind of got, you've got the best of every world here. So you've got, you know, three varieties. They will cross-pollinate. 
you will get good crops reliably. You could grow this in a really big pot, although I would say if you want to keep this in a pot long term, go for something really super big, like one of those half whiskey barrel type yes. affairs where you, you know, you've probably got 80 to 100 litres of volume. Um, but get this, in, get this planted in the soil, get it in a sunny position, and it will reward you with decades and decades of amazing fruit. I, I really like that one. And at 19.99, phenomenal value. Thank you to everyone that's ordering, by the way. Um, great as ever to have your company. And lots of you placing, uh, say, quite big orders today. If you are spending over £40, pounds, you get yeah. free delivery as well. So, Well, group up with a friend. I mean, that, that's what I always say, because some oh, people say to me, they, they, you know, Mavis next door, she, she'd probably love one of these. But honestly, we don't yeah. care. We, we're going to deliver it to one place. But if you happen to be buying two things together with a friend and it all goes to the same, well, it's fine, fine by us. And don't forget, you get that free gift, the 100 short, nice this side that about 25 centimetres with every separate order. And something that I learned from you, Peter, there's one week, I shouldn't tell you this maybe, but I actually got eight. He's going to anyway. He's go. He's going to anyway. Well, he, he I got does, eight. When I, he does that, he knows it's going to upset me, and, he's, and he, he he just does it. But I did. I, I placed eight separate orders. I honestly got eight because I wanted the crocus. We were doing crocus, so I got. Yeah, yeah that's allowed, though, isn't it? Yeah. You Fair told enough. me that. Fair you said it you was. are. No, you are allowed to do that. Um, but honestly, get your compost today. Get your heavy duty pots. Get your fruit trees. Do it in one go, and you get free postage. But we do want to quickly mention the patio cherry uh, little Stellus. It's the the Stella cherry, but it's a small one. This one, yeah. The, this, so, so what hap what happened here was that Stella cherry, one of the most highly regarded sweet fruited cherries, summer fruiting, mm. July fruiting, ever. Will Sibley, who I know really well, who who is, he's known as Grafter Will because he actually does grafting. He actually does grafting commercially. So we'll go and change the varieties uh, that are growing in a nursery. But he spotted um, a section of a Stella cherry that was more compact. So hence, here we are with little Stella. So you get all of the attributes of gorgeous summer fruiting, sweet fruited cherries, but on a compact tree. And the one thing I can say here, looking at these, remember I mentioned about the fruit buds earlier. So here yeah. we've got lovely chunky fruit buds guess what are there these are flowering buds and you can see all of the ones that are closest to the stem down there that that one there that will produce you flowers so i think there's every chance that you, this particular tree will give you gorgeous fruit well certainly yeah. flowers with the potential to turn into fruits this year self-fertile get yourself a paintbrush do a bit of pollination save the bees the work um, but you will get gorgeous fruits around about half past three on the third thursday in july that's the perfect yeah. time to pick them uh, t's and c's do apply <laughs> um, how big could this grow maximum this Peter? is i think this will grow to no more than one and a half meters oh, but, really? but we're talking that, wow. we're talking we're talking this is a slow growing it's on a super dwarfing rootstock it's genetically dwarf so it will remain compact so really manageable God. in any garden and, and i love cherries but they're so expensive to buy aren't they, they? well anything in a punnet that's a fruit is expensive yeah. so if it's in a punnet and you like it grow it yourself cherries is a great example okay. um position wise anything that's fruit anything that's fruiting grow it in a sunny position. The, the sun is one of the main contributors to the sweetness that fruits like cherries yeah. have. So they love sunlight. The more sunlight, the better. So do try and pick you know, a south or a southwesterly facing fence or hedge, or just a patio that's lovely and sunny. And would this be happy to be in a pot all its life? It, definitely, but yeah. you do need to remember, water, water, water. Anything in a pot will go dry if the sun shines, It's particularly when they're a full leaf, because they're consuming quite a lot of water then, so you've got to stay on top of the water. Possibly if, you, if you've got several fruit trees like this, think about one of those little um, automatic irrigation systems. I, th th I think that is gonna be really pretty in spring. Elaine, has just about to check her cherry fruit tree and it has got buds. Oh, there we are. Yes. Brilliant. So that means flowers and that means fruits could be on their way. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's up to nature to decide that. Um, so thank you, Elaine, for, for letting Would us Would you like know. me to bring that over, Sean? Oh, we're going to do the apricot. Well, why not? Let's do it over here. Let, let's, off, let, let's get, let's, poor little Stella. Let's pop Stella over there for a moment. Let's have, um, there we are. And if you do want to go for little Stella, uh, postage is included as well, just twenty nine and ninety nine. Mm. Peter, I've really enjoyed the show. We're going over. We're into overtime, Sean. Oh, it's, it's four o'clock. It's, it's extra time. We're gonna. Well, there were a few injuries, so they always, they, there's always a bit of injury time. 
Oh, we've got another question. Oh, well, that's yeah, fine. It's coming as well. I'm but not busy. Fe- no, you've got a meeting up for, haven't you? Right, we'll make this one quick. Pato Apricot Tree coming up next. Yeah, well, who'd have thought? First of all, who th- who would have thought you could grow apricots in the UK? You absolutely, completely can. And actually, I would say, if you want Ooh. compact, beautifully compact fruit trees, Little Stella plus Dwarf Patio Apricot is the perfect combination. So they fruit around about the same time, so July-ish. Uh, it will vary depending on where you are in the UK. So if you're on the south coast, towards the beginning of that period, uh, but if you're, say, up in Scotland, you're going to be a little bit later. Probably, I think there's normally about a three-week differential between the south coast of the UK and, and Scotland when it comes to fruiting. But this is amazing. So you've got those fabulous flowers, and the fragrance from the flowers in springtime is breathtaking then they get pollinated the fruit set and they go from green and then they progressively swell up and eventually you end up with them amazing apricots and apricots are just great for you they're they're lovely in a preserve so you can mm. if you get a you know one of my really good friends richard richard massey he's got an apricot tree in his garden in spalding so you know not the warmest part of the uk by any not stretch of the imagination he you know those um, plastic baskets that we put our washing in yeah the big the big round things yeah. that have got like the little holes in the side one year he filled two of those with fruits from his apricot tree wow. in spalding so over time i'm not saying you need to get that in the first year or even the first five years but it shows you the potential of what apricot trees and, in the and uk they are can obviously do. fully winter hardy completely fully winter hardy the only thing that you need to really think about with regards to the weather is when they're in flower, if you get a late frost, then that's a problem. So if you've got, when they're, when they're in blossom, when those flowers are open, if you've got the, the threat or the promise of a, of a really cold snap for a day or so, get some fleece, pop the fleece over, the flowers will be preserved. When you take them back, when you take the fleece back off, the pollinators will just go back their work again. Brilliant. Well, we yeah. are nearly out of time. We've got two, two questions. So the potted food trees, like the Stella, the apricot, do they need repotting in the near term, or is it going to be happening there for quite a while, Peter? I would, um, I would definitely say. Um, I was going to whip it out, and I, I, I'm going to. I don't want to make a mess, routine? Sean. I don't want to make a mess. You know, we said about injury time. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it because I will make a mess. I would say these are fully rooted, so the roots are touching all four yeah. sides of the pot. So I would definitely recommend you do repot these into a pot around about three or four times that size. But actually, that's better for you because you'll water less frequently. The plant will grow more vigorously because it's got more growing medium to get its roots into. And it will just give you a better display. Yeah. So bigger, better that, displays. That was but a would, really, really good question. Yeah, Thank you. We, 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 are, we could pot these up into much bigger pots and we could charge you twice as much money for them. We're not going to do that. That's th- something for you to do. But as I showed you earlier with the, with the fruit tree, it's so easy. Yeah, and, so those, quick and those easy. heavy duty pots that we've got on the show, they are ideal for all the Oh, absolutely. Trees. They really yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're brilliant, honestly. Yeah. So do get yeah. those. But if you want more decorative pots, we've got a massive selection on the U Garden uh, website. And we have got a question coming in. You know the mini orchard that we, we oh, yeah. had? Yep. Um, a question about pest control so if we so what what are the pests let's think about the pests that you might get on your fruit trees okay so um you can there are some of the environmental things like you sometimes get blemishes on the fruit um but by planting them in the right position so a lovely light sunny airy air free flowing around the trees will will inhibit that um you sometimes get aphids so you can get aphids so the little white flies and black flies that you sometimes see it depends on your approach to chemical use or not. There are um, commonly available chemicals. Some of them are on our website that you can use that will um, get rid of that sort of pest. Some people use what's called soft soap, which will also get rid of yeah, them I've temporarily, that, yeah. but it won't, it won't get rid of them indefinitely. There's no, um, there's no kind of uh, uh, translocation, so it doesn't get into the sap flow of the plant, but it will get rid of them temporarily. So it's your choice. But the one thing, never use chemicals within six weeks of cropping, uh, picking the fruits, typically. Six weeks is normally considered, in most cases, uh, a, safe, a safe time. But if you're unsure, don't use them. But Provado, the ultimate bug killer, often is available in trigger packs, ready to use. Get it anywhere. That is a great thing if you do get aphids, and that's probably the biggest issue with particularly young, rapidly yeah. growing, healthy trees like these. Well, if you want, I know this has been really popular today. It works at eight pounds a tree. Yeah. So you get all Amazing three value. for twenty-three nine seven three hundred zero zero four. It's your answer. 
Peter, that was really wonderful. And I enjoyed still, it. Still got Thank there. you. I know. Well, it's I wondered. Right, I didn't know. They haven't let me in here for a while, so you know, no, could, you could have gone either way. I, I, I actually learnt a lot there, and I'm sure all our lovely viewers did too. It was brilliant, Peter. Thank you. you very kind. We'll have you back. No, it's, he really is good, isn't he? But we're out of time. You can still order after the show, and we should say we've only shown you a tiny selection of what is available on the YouGarden website. I mean, there are thousands of products and plants there. So this is the head gardener. The one we talk about every show, Peter McDermott, he will be back. Uh, and I will see you very shortly. But uh, so do check out all the great products on our website here at YouGarden.